preparing. Oh yeah, we can't smoke on camera, right? Yeah, why don't, why don't you <laughs> lean slightly to the left or the right? <laughs> Meeting is now Hello. streaming. Okay, cool. Um, I'm, I guess I'm gonna open Twitch just to make sure that it is. Um, but wow, if you, uh, if you are tuning in right now, freaking welcome. Okay, welcome to the scripted reading of your life. <laughs> This is a um, this is a pilot written by me. My name is Caitlin Linden. The pilot is called Teacher with a Gun. Um, it's funny, so please stay. Um, I know it sounds like it wouldn't be, but it is. And everybody here is funny. And there's too many people to introduce, so um, I, I think you should just read their names um, <laughs> as, they, <laughs> as they come up and. Um, Gosh, is that, I'm, I'm just checking to see if this is going on Twitch and, um, okay. I see it. It is. It is. Rachel Maddow. I love your work. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. One of the few and the proud. Oh my gosh. People are here. <laughs> There's 16 people here. You guys. Okay. Wow. We just lost one. There's 15. I'm not going to look at that anymore. <laughs> I just know that it's happening. Um, uh, you guys, we now take you to the Lone Star State. I give you teacher with a gun. <laughs> um, I want to make sure that like whoever's talking is featured. Is that what you guys are seeing? Yes, that is what we are seeing. Okay. All right. I now give you teacher with a gun. Interior. High school art class, day. The class is filled with a sampling of the student body. Several star football players, AP kids, and not AP kids. Frank, shoe water highs quarterback, has a Nerf gun and is shooting foam bullets into people's business. Claudia, a cool, unpopular girl with glasses, speaks up. If we had a teacher who gave a shit, she would tell you to stop. Frank shoots a bullet that sticks on Claudia's glasses. My dad's the mayor. The art teacher, Gracie Farmer, <laughs> 30s, a witchy Aubrey Plaza type, bursts in. Gracie doesn't address the class and immediately begins to mix a bowl of plaster and work on her latest art piece, a human foot and ankle sculpture that takes up her entire desk. Paul, a smart teen, raises his hand. Miss Farmer, do teachers get in trouble for showing up late? Quiet, baby. Nobody likes a narc. I know you don't care, Miss Farmer, but Frank keeps shooting people with... Frank shoots a Nerf bullet into Gracie's plaster. Hey, football guy, I know we're in Texas, but no guns at school. Gracie <laughs> dunks the bullet into the trash. The non-football kids love this retribution. Damn, dog, she got him. <laughs> the school intercom buzzes to life. Good morning, Shewater. Hi. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The class stands. Gracie <laughs> remains seated, distracted. Something is in her eye. I pledge allegiance to the... Gracie Googles, can plaster in your eye make you blind? <laughs> United States of America. Gracie wipes desperately at her eye. She opens her phone camera to have a closer look. And to the Republic for which it... The pledge stops. Principal Duffy, 50s, no nonsense, is seen standing with a portable intercom behind Gracie in the doorway, witnessing her disrespect to the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> All of the students in the class can see the principal seeing Gracie sitting, and they are silent. Gracie is really going to town on her eye until she notices the students looking at something behind her. Gracie adjusts her camera to find Principal Duffy standing expectantly. Okay, psycho, how long have you been there? For which it stands, stands. We stand up and we say our nation's pledge, Miss Farmer. <laughs> oh, damn, dog, you got her. <laughs> Gracie rolls her eyes and stands. Interior teacher's lounge, lunchtime. Gracie walks three steps into the lounge holding a Black Sabbath lunchbox. You hear about that satanic music video as turning everyone's son gay. <laughs> 
I'm still mad about the Pizzagate rat and Hillary Clinton. The left wing agenda is all around us. Gracie walks backward three steps and exits the room. Exterior, school parking lot, continuous. Gracie eats her PB&J alone in the driver's seat of her small orange Chevy S10 truck, doom scrolling on her iPhone. Her feed is full of artists, musicians, and models from New York, and it's making her feel bad. Gracie clicks on her own profile and goes to one of her recent pictures. She's standing on a ladder next to a set of plaster feet and ankles that are a full story tall, smiling. The caption reads, baby's first installation at Bank of America in NYC. Gracie snaps an okay picture of herself for her Instagram story, looking in her side view mirror with the Texas sky behind her. Missing New York today. She deletes that and just puts a sunflower emoji. On her way back into the school, Mrs. Prohl, 40s, perceptive, suspicious, approaches Gracie. Hi, cool girl. What a cool fashion you have going on. Uh, Thanks. (laughs) I I like your... um... Gracie can't find anything to compliment. So, who are you? Why are you here at our school? I already know, but I want you to tell me. My name is Gracie. I just moved home from New York to take care of my dad. Why, are you a cop? New York? I was like, with all that dark clothing on, she's either a witch and she's bad, or she's from New York and she's cool. How cool. Mrs. Prohl and Gracie engage in a tiny stare down that Mrs. Prohl disengages from first. I got to get to class. Okay. Miss Prohl leaves. Boomer. Interior Gracie's classroom after school. Gracie picks up the foot sculpture before from before. It's the size of a tree trunk. So she can't see when Principal Duffy's ass comes along and tap, tap, taps on the door frame. Miss Farmer. Stop sneaking up on me. I'm sorry. Can we have a word about this morning? Not at this volume, Brett Kavanaugh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, can we talk? Yeah, sure. Just, uh, yeah. Let me walk into your car. Principal Duffy and Gracie walk out of the school and through the parking lot. Gracie carries the big foot with no help. How's your pop? Sick. His medical bills are no joke. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Look, Davey's an old friend of mine, and and I respect that you came home to take care of him. But this is your school, and I need to respect it. The ROTC kids come marching across the screen. (laughs) Duffy shushes Gracie and salutes them. Gracie rolls her eyes and with arms still full, gives them a tiny thumbs up. This is our school and we are in Texas, Miss Farmer. Not a sensitivity workshop in Vermont, you hear? <laughs> I hear. You're on thin ice. Don't make me regret giving you this job. Gracie stops at her truck that has a Bernie sticker from 2020. For sure. Act one, interior, scooters bar, early evening, a sweaty dive with neon Budweiser signs and a gravel parking lot out front. The bartender, Scooter, late 30s, scruffy but hot, is Gracie's ex (laughs) from when they were teens. Hey, let me guess. Anything but beer for my high school girlfriend. After the day I've had, I think I'll just take anything. Thank you. Scooter sniffs a bottle of wine. Well, this one's just about skunked on it. (laughs) you always knew how to make a girl feel special gracie sips and watches as a few serious line dancing couples show out to the country western tunes you know i haven't seen you in like what do you think six years Rhonda, 50s low ponytail big new mexico t-shirt you saw me yesterday you dumbass (laughs) i'm talking to her well i don't know when you saw her last i know you don't know Give me a free beer. Or I'm leaving you a bad Yelp review. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Scooter gets Rhonda a free beer. Gracie laughs. <laughs> yeah, about six years. So how's your dad? I'm dying. How's your dad? Dead. Still holding on to his property till the oil well dries up, then I'll probably sell it. You know, a lot of people are farming solar energy now and wind. Oh, hell no. Ain't no way you could put the sun and the wind in my truck and make it go fast. Gracie laughs, (laughs) almost done with her wine. It's a vibe. (laughs) (laughs) You think I'm so dumb? No, I don't. I just don't see how you never got out of here. You gonna take me away from this sad, broken place, city girl? Are you ever gonna leave on your own? I got a kid, and unless you're looking to help me raise her, I think the Lone Star State will do just fine. You got a kid? Man, you really are living the dream. 
please tell me in a simple way I can understand how is the greatest city on earth? It's great. The greatest. She drains the glass. Got any more bad wine? Scooter fills up Gracie's glass. Hey, I Googled your name and a big pair of my feet came up. Those are not your feet. (laughs) Why did you make a huge ass pair of my feet? Gracie rolls her eyes. Those feet symbolize all the people who live in the world without shoes on or whatever. They're not your feet. Really? Really. When did you get so worried about people without shoes on? I was dating this guy in New York who was an activist, kind of like the Peace Corps, but actually hardcore. Ooh, a tough guy. He got me a grant to do some big installation art by saying it was political. And then he cheated on me. Oh my God, Beth! Gracie's BFF from high school, Beth, 30s, still fun, enters with her three child aged kids. <laughs> Get over here, bitch! Beth and her kids, Marcus, Ava, and Drake, instantly disrupt the orderly line dancing couples. Hey, we're practicing for state! <laughs> <laughs> Beth and Gracie scream, hug, and jokingly line dance around. If I didn't just get rebaptized, I'd kick your ass. <laughs> if I didn't just buy a pregnancy test, I'd kick yours. Hey, Beth, you can't be having those kids in here. Y'all. Hard scooter, go run around outside. Kids leave. The girls sit down at the bar. Give me a Long Island, but make it a virgin. No such thing. You ain't got iced tea? Scooter holds up a tea bag. I got hot tea. Bitch, how long have you been back? Just a few days. Dad's not so far along that I can't work, so I'm back at the school teaching art. Oh my god. I would have died before I thought you'd end up back at Shoewater High. You missed five-year reunion on purpose. Yeah, it felt great. Uh, Where's, what's his name? Uh, Carl? Or Steve? Joe? Beth's kids run back inside. They all have different dads. Mom, Marcus pushed me off the car! She jumped, I just helped her! Mom, I'm (laughs) hungry. Do they have food here? Scooter gives the kids a bowl of unshelled peanuts. Y'all better take these outside and stay there. I ate the shell. You want some lime slices? Yes. Stop giving them stuff. We're about to leave. The kids go outside. <laughs> wow, Beth, you're like a mom for real. Yeah, and you're a high school teacher for real. Exterior, Gracie's house later. Gracie pulls up to a modest house with a porch light on. She quietly opens the front door expecting to be alone when she sees her father, Davey, 72, feeble, spirited, (laughs) smoking a cigarette, eating a drumstick from a bucket of KFC and cleaning a big pile of guns. Ah! Dad, you scared me. You're the one sneaking into the house all suspicious like some kind of home invasion commercial. I don't have a ski mask on. For me, it was the tiptoe. How was school? Can you not smoke inside or at all? And just where are you coming from this evening, my saintly daughter? The bar. Let me have my thing. And don't say anything about the chicken either. Okay, well then can you please not clean a hundred guns on the dining room table? Davy picks up a rifle, cocks it, and looks into its sight. I'm going to sell them. Actually, going to sell them because the pawn shop will give me more if I look at them like how you're looking at me right now. They'll be scared. I can't be responsible for selling your guns, Dad. They make me and my generation too uncomfortable. Your mom didn't like guns either. But she liked that I liked them, probably, even though she'd never admit it and would actually deny it. I didn't realize you had so many. Some of these are genuine antiques. Consider a donation to my cause. I've seen these doctor bills. Take me to the shop, please, honey. Ugh. Or I'll shoot. Davy spins a revolver. <laughs> Gracie screams. Don't worry, sweetie. This isn't loaded. Davy checks in the chamber and finds a bullet. He quietly takes it out and sets it on a small <laughs> mountain of other guns. Okay, these aren't loaded. And they're worth a lot, to me at least. Okay, okay, fine. Gracie sulks upstairs. But this is so annoying. Act two, flashback. (laughs) Interior, Gracie's New York art show opening night. 
Gracie is speaking to a cool crowd. Everyone is holding a champagne glass in a Bank of America lobby. The huge foot statue from her Instagram is in the center of the room. Thank you so much to Bank of America for commissioning this enormous project that is so near and dear to my heart. As people come into this bank, rich people, poor people, socialists who need loans, and they worship at the altar of capitalism, may they always stop for a moment and feel gratitude for the shoes on their feet. Because there are so many people out there who really don't have any shoes, like for real, like most people don't have shoes. And if they do have shoes, they probably don't have a lot of them. Anyways, this is me using my platform for good. Cheers. A Janelle Monet song plays as Gracie greets a few people. <laughs> the song is interrupted with a, oh yes, from Low Rider. <laughs> Gracie, your dad is calling. Should I answer? No, just l- let it go to voicemail. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Everyone has stopped talking. There's a horrible silence. Gracie, the music stopped. What's your passcode? 6669. 6669. The music resumes. Xander, Gracie's complicated art boyfriend, comes over and kisses her on the cheek. Great speech, baby. Thank you, baby. <laughs> I was trying to be smart. The music is interrupted again with the oh yes from Low Rider. <laughs> Gracie, your dad is calling again. Let it go to voicemail. Okay, shit. Are you okay, baby? Yeah, I'm having like an out of body experience and can't stop worrying about what everyone is thinking of me right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I can't ever let myself really enjoy anything. <laughs> I think you're great. Thanks, baby. Xander kisses Gracie on the cheek and goes off into the crowd. Gracie looks at everyone and forces a smile. Excuse me, can you get me another champagne? You know, I'm actually the artist being featured right now. And I'm actually the executive who approved this. The rich woman gesticulates vaguely around her. <laughs> I'll go get you a drink. As Gracie walks through the crowd, she hears the, oh, yes, again. Gracie grabs her phone and sees a new voicemail from her father. She sneaks off around a corner to listen. Chad. (laughs) Chad, you're muted. Chad. (laughs) Chad, you're, Chad. Hey, sweetheart. (laughs) <laughs> I, uh, well, I hope you know how proud I am of your big foot art opening. I wanted to be there, but I fear New York City. Uh, and also, I'm sick. I-, I didn't know how to tell you. They don't know how long I have. Anyways, I hope you weren't playing music on your phone when I called. I love you. <laughs> Gracie sheds a tear, takes a breath, and searches for her boyfriend. She finds him upstairs with another woman, Bianca, hot. She sees Xander's hand on Bianca's lower back. Xander is speaking closely in Bianca's ear. I've been examining you closely all night. Do you have a temperature? No, why? (laughs) Because you're so hot. Xander and Bianca make out. Are you hurt? No, why? Because I saw you fall from heaven onto that S. Uh, okay, stop doing pickup lines on me and go break up with your girlfriend. Gracie's eyes are wide and she raises a hand to her mouth. I don't know if I'm ready. What? I mean, I, I like Gracie. She she does stuff that no one else would ever do, that no one ever think to do, like weird stuff, bad okay, stuff. If you, like, if you like her so much, why are you here with me? Because I like to do bad stuff, too. They make out again. Gracie hurries away, feeling sick. Excuse me, where's my drink? Sorry, but I'm having a panic attack. (laughs) Oh, stop the party. A woman in her 30s needs a Xanax. Give me a break. With tears streaming down her face, Gracie finds a champagne flute for this mean hoe. 
God, what is this, Andre? <laughs> Exterior Bank of America continues. Gracie orders a lift as she's waiting for it. She buys a ticket to Texas on her iPhone. Present day. Woo, woo, woo. Interior Gracie's room. Morning. The alarm clock reads 8.05. Gracie's passed out, hung over from the night before. You're late. Gracie's eyes slam open. She falls out of bed and pulls on some black clothes from the floor, runs out the, and runs out the door. Davy gives Gracie a travel mug of coffee. I thought you were supposed to be the one taking care of me. Bye, Dad. I'll take care of you later. Gracie speeds off. Interior, Gracie's truck continuous. Gracie drives haphazardly and tries to fix her appearance in the rearview mirror while also changing the radio station and also gulping coffee. Her eyes catch a box of Davy's things on the passenger side floorboard, including guns. Gracie spits out her coffee and calls her dad. Hello? Dad, why are there guns in the car that I'm driving to school? Oh, heck, Gracie, nothing's going to happen. I just put them in there so you'd pawn them later. I can't bring guns to school. Why not? People bring guns to school all the time. I don't know if you know this, but those people are bad and I am good. Put a jacket on the box. You're getting all worked up over nothing. If I wasn't so late, I'd turn around right now and take them back home. Gracie hangs up. Interior, Gracie's classroom, continuous. The class is already seated and doing their thing. Gracie comes barreling in wearing sunglasses. The quarterback of the football team, Frank, has drawn a big plan on the chalkboard. Okay, so we're going to go over to Corn High and pee on the statue. Then we're going to get Luke's truck and we're going to pull the statue out. And then we're going to bring the statue back here. Yeah, let's pee on it. Then put it in my truck. Gracie sits down at her desk, unaffected. Miss Farmer, the football team is co-backing the No, no, Rolando, Rolando. Oh, is that you too? I'm sorry. <laughs> that is me. That is me. Miss Farmer, the football team is committing a plan to commit theft at their rival team school, and they're making us help them. Uh, just shut up, narc. Hey, football, you don't call him a narc. Only I call him a narc. What do you mean they're making you? Don't tell her. Tell me, Nar. <laughs> Frank said we have to go and hack into security system at Corn High while they steal their statue, which is so dumb. Oh, dude, you're such a narc, man. Hey! <laughs> Gracie stands up and asserts herself, surprising Frank and everyone, and then she sits back down. The world is brutal, okay? It's already brutal without you guys being dicks to each other, so just be nice. And you're probably just gonna get in trouble if you do all this shit anyway. She indicates the chalkboard. What is this? What is that even a statue of? Zoom in on a picture of an unflattering statue depicting a bald old white man in sweats who's screaming and pointing. That's her, like their founding coach or whatever. <laughs> mm, pretty sure that's a Confederate statue. Yeah. Anyway, so all the nerds are going to hack into their system. And then when they no do that- more Confederate statue heist, sit down. From now on, you need to treat this class the same as your other classes. This isn't a class. You aren't even a teacher. You're just like a loser with a foot fetish and a big fat butt. Oh, well, congratulations. You are the only idiot to ever get an F in art class. I know you can't play football if you don't pass. (laughs) This is bullshit. Do you know who my dad is? Frank storms out. The football team follows. What are their names so that I can tell HR that this happened? We don't have HR at high school. Okay, then I'll just do nothing. (laughs) His dad is the mayor. Gracie puts her hand and her head in her hands. The class stares at her. Jeff, a kid with skinny jeans and Ray-Bans on, speaks. So can we like learn some art? (laughs) I want to be like Banksy. (laughs) (laughs) Exterior, school parking lot, after school. Gracie is the only one around. And as she gets into her truck, she hears an altercation. Oh, you can't kidnap me. Do you even know who my dad is? Tape his mouth. Wait, stop, (laughs) don't. Gracie can see students through her front windshield a row away and a few cars down. Frank is cowering on the ground with four big guys around him. They tape his mouth. Frank struggles to get up. Oh, you're going to put up a fight, huh? I'll die him. Gracie's like, what the (laughs) fuck? She frantically looks around and realizes that she truly is the only person around witnessing this. Jet. Gracie dials 911. (laughs) Howdy, you've reached 911. What seems to be the trouble? There's like a mob of kids at Shoewater High and they're kidnapping one of my students. Oh, 
my goodness. Did you try to stop them? No. Well, don't just stand there. Wow, thanks. <laughs> Gracie hangs up. The opposing football team starts kicking Frank and trying to load him into the back of their truck. Gracie has no choice but to be a hero. Hey, I'm a teacher here and I just called the cops, so you boys better knock it off. Oh no, an old goth called the cops, run. <laughs> <laughs> Do we take her too? Good idea. No witnesses. Mm -hmm. Go pick her up. Linebacker and muscle guy advance toward her. Stop it. Stay where you are. Or you're going to give us an F. Or else I'll... Gracie's eyes go toward the box on her floorboard. She picks up an antique rifle and shakily aims it. Uh Uh-oh. Teacher with a gun. Hey, Annie Oakley, put that thing away or someone might get hurt. Leave us alone and let our senior prank fall apart? No way! (laughs) She's just bluffing. That thing's not loaded. There are cars length away from her now. Gracie closes her eyes and squeezes the trigger. A shot is fired. (gasps) Everyone freezes, except for the back tire of the corn high truck, which deflates in a second. Did did you mean to do that, or were you aiming at us? Police sirens can be heard in the distance. We gotta get out of here. The corn high guys dump Frank and speed away on their three wheels. Gracie drops the gun and is shaking. Frank is still hogtied with tape on his mouth. Frank! She rips off the tape. (laughs) That was so dope. I'm telling everyone. Gracie tries unsuccessfully to put the tape back on. (laughs) Two cops, Chet and Lou, who are not Italian, arrive at the scene and park (laughs) haphazardly. Get on the ground! I am on the ground! Gracie rolls her eyes and sits on the ground. I'm the one who called you guys, but just so you know, I firmly believe in defunding the police. Gracie Farmer from high school? Oh, hi, Chet. You're a cop now, I see. Miss Farmer saved my life. She she shot out that guy's tire like, <laughs> uh, they were trying to kidnap me. True. It was an accident. Am I under arrest? (laughs) Hell no, girl. This is exactly why teachers should be armed, to protect their students. And also, it's badass. (laughs) Please don't tell anyone. Gracie stands and picks up the shotgun. Chet Chet snaps a picture of her brandishing the weapon. Then he poses Gracie with Frank, who's still hogtied, and takes a picture of that. Delete those pictures, Chet. I don't want to end up on the- Smash cut! Six o'clock news! Do, 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 do. Tonight, the left swerves right as local hero and art teacher Gracie Farmer protects her student with a gun. Footage of the altercation from a security camera plays, and the pictures the police took are shown. Now it's MSNBC! Hi, I'm Rachel Maddow, and this next news story is, wow, disgraced New York City installation artist Gracie Farmer makes a big bang after moving home to her small town of Shewater, Texas. Pictures of Gracie's foot art from New York are shown. Now we're at Fox News. I'm Tucker Carlson. Replacement theory is real. And I'm on a Zoom call right now with the student <laughs> Gracie Farmer defended with a gun. Oh my God. Dude, it was sick. She was like, blah, blah. And uh, man, I was like, okay, if our class is going to be like this, uh, uh, it's tight with guns now, okay? <laughs> Interior Scooter's Bar later. Gracie walks in. There's an explosion of energy. Yay! Yay! Quick, let me get a picture of you while you're standing in front of the TV while you're on the TV. Then I can print it out and show it to those antique roadshow guys. Oh, shit. My crones. (laughs) Rhonda makes a beeline for the bathroom. (laughs) Gracie, you're famous. Really an an accident from inside the bathroom Rhonda says I heard she killed them killed his tire maybe you're always surprising me Ms. Farmer anything but beer I'll take a beer exterior Gracie's house late night Gracie's dad is sitting on the porch and is beaming with pride here she is Um, (laughs) I really don't want to identify with the events that took place today if you don't, then I will. Oh, by the way, you're on CNN now. CNN? It's a big news network. I know what CNN is. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to my room. My script got fucked up. 
Oh no! She <laughs> angrily sets the rifle on um, top. Like a, can you do it until of her Thank foot you. statue and storms up the stairs. Davy looks at the profound arrangement she's made on accident. Davy proudly takes a picture of the gun on top of the plaster foot and posts it to Twitter. Today, my daughter, Gracie Farmer, protected her student at school because she knows how to stand her ground. And then she came home and made this. Hashtag stand your ground. Hashtag guns and art. Hashtag hell yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Texas forever. Tucker Carlson retweets it. Keep going. Yeah, sorry. No worries. Interior Gracie's room, continuous. Gracie looks at flights back to New York. She gets an email notification from Bank of America, NYC. Can you read that too, Becca? Yeah. Oh, no, wait, I got, I got it. I got it. Oh, here. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Caitlin. Gracie, we regret to inform you that in light of the recent events, Bank of America will be unable to continue to show your art in our lobby space. As America's number one bank, we cannot afford to endorse guns or violence or accidents or liberalism or your whole <laughs> cognitive dissonance thing. Effective immediately, we will be removing your sculpture. You may pick it up by the end of the week or we will throw it in the harbor. Gracie cries herself. <laughs> Act three, Gracie's classroom before school. Gracie is packing up the things in her desk when Principal Duffy tap, tap, taps on her door. Gracie screams. You have to stop doing that. I'm sorry. Good thing you weren't armed. Gracie continues to pack. <laughs> so I'm probably fired, huh? Art, are you kidding? That was the most badass thing a teacher's ever done. You have a job for life. Hey, keep up the good work. Duffy exits. Gracie sits down and notices that her phone is going wild. She opens up Twitter to see the picture her dad took is trending along with her news story. Damn it. I never should have gotten my dad on Twitter. Gracie's ex, Xander, texts her. Hey, I know we're not really speaking right now, but are you okay? Miss Prol enters. Okay, bitch. I know you were cool, but this is next level. You got to come to book club. What's the <laughs> book? Oh, uh, we mostly read magazines. Exterior, the <laughs> shooting range, after school, bang, bang, bang. Book club is where Mrs. Prohl and her friends, Jill, a very tiny, very tan woman in her 70s with dyed blonde hair and rhinestones everywhere. Sandy's, 40, a bless your heart, mom jeans mom, and Elaine, 40s, a local attorney who works with the mayor, all go to do target practice. Gracie stands back while these four women lay to waste to the outlines of humans with handguns. A whistle sounds and everyone puts their guns down except Jill. Jill! Put it down, Jill! Imagine he was JFK and got carried away! <laughs> the targets come forward automatically and the women reload their gun clips. Aw, oh, shoot. I keep accidentally aiming to kill. Her target has bullet holes in the face, heart, and dick. I'm having the opposite problem. <laughs> There's a halo of bullets around Elaine's target. Gracie, take my spot for this next round. I really thought this was going to be a book club. I actually don't like guns. I was the same way. I didn't like guns until they started making them for women. Isn't it cute? <laughs> <laughs> Andy cruise over her pink gun. <laughs> Elaine's phone rings. I gotta take this. It's the mayor. Hello? Elaine walks off. Keep hearing about this mayor. Well, yeah. You know whose son's life you saved yesterday, right? I don't think those boys were gonna kill Frank. I'm pretty sure it was just a senior prank. Just a prank, huh? Then why did you shoot up all their tires and blow out their gas tank? <laughs> it was just one tire, and I did it because they were threatening to take me too, okay? So what you were saying is you were scared. Yeah, yeah, I guess I was scared. The whistle blows again, the shooting resumes. This time I'm pretending it's John Lennon. Rock and roll needs to die. <laughs> Jill lays her target to waste. Mrs. Prohl offers Gracie her gun. Gracie declines and tries to respond to Xander. Hey, Xander, thanks for texting me. It all happened so fast, and I'm just feeling really alone right now. I didn't even think the gun was loaded. I was just scared. Ugh. The more I take this out, the worse it sounds. <laughs> My dad and everyone are really proud, but I feel so weird. Bank of America emailed me and said they're going to take down my installation, so that sucks. And I'm still feeling confused by you. Gracie deletes the message. The whistle sounds again. Shooting stops. Gracie, that was the mayor. I know. Well, he saw a picture of what your dad posted last night on Twitter. The gun sculpture? He wants to commission one for the fountain outside of City Hall. The little fountain or the big one? 
the big one. Oh my God. I don't have a fountain, but I do have a garden. Would you sell me a smaller <laughs> standard ground statue? Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I will say though, art can get pretty expensive and I need to see how much my dad needs for his doctor bills. Let me give you a hint, honey. The mayor is going to use city money to fund this public art. So that's basically a blank check. I'm independently wealthy of my husband, <laughs> who is also wealthy. The whistle blows again. Gracie is emotional. Mrs. Pearl offers Gracie the gun and her spot. Gracie accepts. Full frontal shot of Gracie aiming the gun. The book club behind her cheering. Gracie <laughs> shoots. Black <laughs> Tag outside Gracie's house early evening. Davy is marinating a huge rack of ribs and lighting a cigarette off of another cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> you gotta help me do this rub. Dad, I can't just rub a dead body with flavor. Well, if you don't, then no one's gonna know the, da the Davy Farmer's secret recipe. Reluctantly, Gracie stands by her dad and gingerly starts rubbing the ribs and looking the other way. If I do this, you have to try my impossible meat burgers. I tried. You did? Yeah, I tried to throw him away. <laughs> Davy throws a hunk of impossible meat at Gracie's face. Gracie screams. Ew, dad. Gracie grabs a nearby hose and sprays Davy. They laugh. Fireflies come out. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Um, thank you to everyone who was here and everyone on Twitch who's watching. Um, if you if you have a buck or two, that'd be cool to send it to Pack Dash Theater on Venmo. I I know they'd sure appreciate it. Um, pandemic's almost over, and uh, it'd be cool to do something like this in person again. Um, thank you to everyone who read, and uh, I guess that's it, right? Thanks, Caitlin, for writing. Thank you, Caitlin. Great job. Caitlin. Thank you, Caitlin. All my talented friends. Thank you to everyone out there. Many blessings. Bye. <laughs> Can I just wow. say, in typical Texas fashion, while we were all reading, the biggest mosquito was in the office. And I was like, <laughs> she knew. It was like, pew, pew, pew. It's like, I want to be a Twitch famous. <gasps> well, now it is. We've all thought about it. Great. <laughs> okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. 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 Congratulations. Stuck. I guess I'll sign off. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you.